Snipers, you have to see what's happening under the Bitcoin price today as we have closed our first four hour candle below 38,000 US dollars, which we know is an extremely important level here for Bitcoin. And now we've seen the price action dip below 34,000 US dollars, but we've yet to break the previous low at 30,000 US dollars. Today, we're going to be discussing a unpopular opinion, and that is going to be the downside targets potentially for Bitcoin as we do have 23,800 here as a major support level if we continue to breach 34,800. And then, of course, there is still a bullish bias if we fail to come down to this thirty thousand dollar level and form another low, we could be seeing the early signs of a recovery operation where Bitcoin can start to head back above the forty five thousand dollar level and retest this weekly open at forty six thousand five hundred. And notice how for those tuned into the Cypress channel yesterday, I said the only way I would assume further upside for Bitcoin is if we're able to get above forty four thousand eight hundred and test this weekly open at forty six thousand five hundred. And you can see we failed to do that. We saw a rejection at this major area of forty one thousand nine hundred and fifty where we had previous support now become resistance. And so I do have a lot of puzzle pieces to talk about today. And when we look at the total cryptocurrency market cap chart, notice on the weekly chart, we are below home base right now at the 20 week moving average. And this candle has three days left to go. Are we going to see this candle push back above the 20 week moving average, which we like to call home base and head back towards this monthly open above the two trillion dollar market cap level for the total cryptocurrency market? We have a lot to look at today and notice how all of this is happening while the DXY today is showing a push to the upside. And so I'm going to look at traditional markets as well and talk about whether or not this consolidation for the DXY is a positive or negative thing for the traditional markets and the cryptocurrency market, because we are still below the weekly open and previous weekly open for the DXY. And if we start to see this push back down, that could give the breathing room that we need for an early recovery operation when it comes to the cryptocurrency market, as we've seen a brutal breakdown over the last week. And I am certainly looking for a bottom right now, if that's what you want to ask me, I certainly am looking for a bottom at some point or another. And when we look at Bitcoin dominance, which we'll cover after we look at Ethereum, notice here how we have this bullish engulfing candle on the 19th of May. We cannot ignore this. I want to talk about Bitcoin dominance and how that could affect others dominance, because you can see others dominance is testing this 50 period moving average on the daily chart for the third time this month. And the more we knock on a door, the likelihood of that door opening becomes a lot higher. And notice how there's confluence here with this 50 day moving average and the monthly open. And that's not a coincidence it's sitting right at 14.25 percent dominance. That's going to have a huge impact on altcoins. So first, let's look at Bitcoin. You guys are watching the Snipers channel. Remember to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. First, I want to start on the daily time frame because we know everything morphs from the smaller time frames into the larger time frames. But we always have to keep in mind the larger time frames and then come into the smaller time frames so that we have a macro view of the market and we're not fooled by the institutions. And notice how so far Bitcoin is yet to see any daily candles close below this 200 day moving average sitting right at forty thousand three hundred US dollars. And because none of these candles have closed fully below the 200 day moving average, full body and wick, in my opinion, there is still a chance for Bitcoin to see upside through this weekend and into next week. Heading towards this weekly open is going to be the first signs of a recovery operation at forty six thousand five hundred. If we're able to get above that, I do believe we can come up and test this monthly open at fifty eight thousand three hundred, where we know it's an extremely important level where Bitcoin saw a Elon Musk pump top. And then we saw this act as a major area of chart vibration through the early parts of twenty twenty one. And so if we're able to break through fifty eight thousand three hundred, that's the signal for potentially new all time highs for Bitcoin. And that's the upside. So nothing has changed from yesterday. The weekly open forty six thousand five hundred. We need to get above that. And we also do not want to start closing any daily candles, full body and wicks below 
that $40,300 level where we have the 200 day moving average on the daily chart. But then when we go into the six hour chart, notice how when we bottomed at 30,000 here a few days ago on the 19th of May, we saw an immense amount of buy volume inside of this pocket between 23,800 and 34,800. And we know if Bitcoin starts to close hourly and four hour candles below 34,800, unfortunately, this may be an unpopular opinion, but there is a potential we could come down and test 23,800. And right below that, we have the previous all time high from 2017 at that $19,800 level. I do not believe Bitcoin will get to this level. And the reason I say that is if we look at every Bitcoin cycle in the past, every time we've broken an all time high, we've never come down to retest that all time high. We're already over 50 percent down from the recent Bitcoin all time high at sixty four thousand. And so at this point, we really want to monitor the hourly and four hour charts at that thirty four thousand eight hundred dollar level. The first confirmation of a potential downside scenario will be hourly and four hour candles closing below this level, just like this four hour candle closed below thirty eight thousand today. And that's exactly why I had to get this video out to you immediately is exactly when we saw Bitcoin come down below thirty four thousand. So the same rule applies to the thirty four thousand eight hundred dollar level for Bitcoin. We don't want to break that level if we maintain four hour candles at this area and we continue to see chart vibration here, we could see maybe a higher low form and that would then translate to Bitcoin coming back up potentially towards the weekly open at forty six thousand five hundred or we could even see a lower low form. So there's even a potential for us to come down, not test twenty three thousand eight hundred and still bottom out inside of this pocket. I do believe as an umpire that the pocket between twenty three thousand eight hundred and thirty four thousand eight hundred is the area that Bitcoin is going to see medium term support. And in the next few weeks, I do believe Bitcoin can get back above 40,000 and potentially even 50,000 if we see this sort of bottoming out pattern play out. Now, realize that the four hour and hourly confirmations below thirty four thousand eight hundred are the key levels to watch right now. And when we look at what's happening to Ethereum, notice how Ethereum has already come down back below this support level where if you guys have tuned into the Sniper's channel for the last four months, I've talked about Ethereum always being a good asset to long when we're below this channel. And right now we're actually right now below this channel. Does that mean that we're going to potentially see Ethereum come back into the three thousand dollar range? I think the real confirmation will have to be getting above this monthly open where you can see there's confluence with this channel resistance. And that's right at that twenty seven hundred seven T five level. So two thousand seven hundred and seventy five. If we're able to get above that, that would also put us above the 50 day moving average. None of this is a coincidence that this channel resistance and 50 day moving average and monthly open are all at that twenty eight hundred dollar level if you want to simplify it. And so if we get above twenty eight hundred, I definitely believe Ethereum will get back above three thousand potentially head towards thirty five hundred. So that's what we want to watch. But we are at a very important area. A lot of the price action that we'll see with Ethereum to the US dollar will have to do with what Bitcoin decides to do. If it wants to break down or continue to recover, then that's going to influence the Ethereum price. Notice on the daily chart, we are testing sixty five thousand Satoshis. The same rule that applies to Bitcoin's price not coming below thirty four thousand eight hundred and closing four hour and hourly candles applies to Ethereum not closing four hour or hourly candles below sixty five thousand. So far, if we go on the four hour chart, we've yet to see any candles close below this level. If we start closing below sixty five thousand, there could be a potential that Bitcoin will see a lot more strength than Ethereum because that could lead to further downside when it comes to the value of Ethereum against Bitcoin, which matters 
immensely when we're trading the Ethereum to US dollar price. So we need to maintain 65,000 Satoshis for Ethereum if we want to assume that it's going to be the stronger asset in the next few weeks. And then let's take a look at the total cryptocurrency market cap and altcoins are making a buzz right now. Notice how we are here at this 200 day moving average, retesting it for the first time in this bull market, right? And so the 200 day moving average is an extremely important level. So far, we've only had one daily candle come down to that area. And on the weekly chart, we have three days left to go. And it looks like, in my opinion, that this weekly candle is going to be above that 20 week moving average by the time it closes. And if that's the case, we could see further upside. But a lot of this will have to do with Bitcoin. So let's continue to monitor what Bitcoin is doing. It is 45 percent dominant in this market, the largest coin. And so a lot of what happens in this market typically will follow Bitcoin. And when we look at others dominance, what we're going to have to monitor into this weekend and into next week is how are we going to handle this monthly open at 14.2 percent dominance? If we start closing hourly in four hours below the week, the monthly open, that's showing confluence with this 50 day moving average. That would be the first time we'd really be breaching a major support since the start of all coin season. At that point, I would potentially start to look for a reversal in the Bitcoin to altcoin trend when it comes to altcoins being the stronger asset in 2021 that could potentially change. But we've yet to see confirmations of that. I know a lot of people, a lot of analysts are saying that altcoin season is done. For me, it's not done because the chart has yet to confirm that. And so that's my opinion on altcoins. Bitcoin dominance is showing some signs of life. We saw this bullish engulfing candle on the 19th of May. We can't ignore this. What we want to monitor now is are we going to get above 45 percent dominance? If so, that would also start leading us to assume that there could be a potential reversal in the trend. But we're so far below the 200 day moving average and so far below home base here at the 20 week moving average that I cannot sit here and say that altcoin season is done confidently as an umpire. And so I know a lot of people are saying it's done. I don't have that opinion yet. And let's look at traditional markets. So all of this is happening when the DXY is pushing up today over 0.3 percent. Right. So there's obviously a correlation here between the cryptocurrency market and the strength of the US dollar at this point, because we're still below the previous weekly open and weekly open. If the dollar stays in this range, that's the preferred scenario for us to see a recovery operation in the crypto market after this brutal week. And so let's monitor this as we head into the close of this week. And obviously, this is an important resistance. We don't want to see the DXY push up above this because that could confirm that the downtrend has more room to go, because if the dollar strength continues to the upside, that's a warning sign. The S&P 500 showing the path of least resistance when there's low volume going sideways to a little bit higher below the weekly and monthly open and the previous weekly open. This could affect the cryptocurrency market. Let's continue to watch this 50 day moving average for the S&P 500. A break below this changes a lot of the puzzle pieces that we have on the table. And then the way that we predicted the Bitcoin top using the gold to Bitcoin chart, gold is breaking out right now. Look at gold against the Bitcoin chart after we've been covering this since the breakdown from this triangle and coming below the 50 day moving average. And this is an inverted chart. Keep in mind, notice how it's still showing signs that it wants to continue further. This red line was the 2017 bottom when it comes to the gold to Bitcoin chart. Remember, this is inverted. And so let's monitor this through the end of this week to see are we going to continue further if we break down below the 2017 bottom? That's not a good sign for Bitcoin. So let's monitor this. I may have had some unpopular opinions on this video today, but I am here to be your umpire. And so I'm always going to give you guys an unbiased perspective of the market. And with that, I appreciate each and one of you snipers that are tuned into our channel. If you want to win one of my favorite books on investing principles by Ray Dalio, comment below and share this video, comment your favorite altcoin. And I will read all the comments and we'll choose a winner here. Matthew Fiskel and says snipers out. That's some old school 2017 right there. Good to see you, Naeem. Thank you for being tuned in since 2017. Matthew, send me a message on Instagram. You want a book? And lastly, I am going to be at Bitcoin Miami June 4th to June 5th. I'd love to see you guys there. Michael Saylor will be there. Jack Dorsey, the founder of Twitter, Tony Hawk and many of my friends, Charles Hoskinson, Jeremy Gardner, Brock Pierce. A lot of the founders will be there. 
I'd love to see you guys there. I'll be hosting a meet and greet dinner and I'll announce that next week. So ticket prices are going up in two days. Link is in the description below. Sign up and I'd love to see you guys there. And with that, thank you all for tuning into the Snipers channel today. Once again, I appreciate each and every one of you guys. Remember to smash the like button for the YouTube algorithm. And until next time, snipers.